Welcome to Viewpoints. I'm Heather Isveron, and with me today is Keith Squires, Commissioner for Public Safety for the State of Utah, also Homeland Security Advisor. Welcome, Keith. Thanks, Heather. It's a pleasure to be with you, as always. Great to be here with you. Thank you. So you've gone through quite an evolution in the state of Utah with cyber uh, and cybersecurity specifically. Uh, today we want to talk about how you identified the issue and then how you went about um, working through the issue and perhaps giving some smart practices of what our audience can expect to do with the information you provide here today. Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, you know, really it goes back to my previous position that I served in um, back in, um, you know, 2007 on. I served as the governor's Homeland Security Advisor in the Deputy Commissioner's position. And so uh, the State Bureau of Investigations, our Fusion Center, all came up through me. But uh, the one thing that uh, kept reoccurring was I was being advised from my Director of Technical Services that uh, we were having increasing incidents of cyber attacks against not only the Utah Department of Public Safety, but all the state databases. And so it was significant. Um, the default was to report it to uh, the federal agencies, but the uh, realities that I learned over time was that uh, there were such limited resources at the federal level that uh, really couldn't be applied to investigating these crimes to much extent. And so we were looking for a way as we learned more about how we might be able to offer assistance at the state level and uh, actively engage in cyber crimes enforcement. And uh, that's kind of what brought us to uh, where we're at today. But uh, a lot of things took place between then and now. So yeah, for the audience's sake, uh, can you give an example of what, um, what would have happened uh, where this, uh, the feds wouldn't have uh, the resources? So an event, perhaps? Um, there was an account that uh, had been uh, $2.5 million of funds electronically diverted. And as um, our technical services folks started to look at it, they realized that uh, this was an organized crime outfit in Texas. And they linked that through the URL and the computers being used and communicating back and forth with their counterparts. And so uh, fortunately, through that work, they were able to mitigate the loss and uh, um, protect all of it, but about $300,000. But to state government or any agency, um, that's a lot of money, and that's just one incident. A lot of other things were taking place. We had uh, senator, a state senator who um, was being targeted by Anonymous as part of um, their um, voicing uh, displeasure with a bill that she was running uh, that had to do with uh, gang graffiti. And so once she was targeted, um, it was a matter of trying to intimidate her, have influence on our political process, and have her withdraw her bill. And so those kind of attacks taking place um, really do deserve an investigation, and if at all possible, to uh, bring the perpetrators to justice. A colleague of yours had mentioned about the battlefield being not so much uh, you know, in person, so it's a bank robbery, for right. example, but that actually all these different crimes from um, blackmail to robbery, uh, they're all online now. And the nation's law enforcement uh, agencies really need to look at that as the, the place they need to be putting their resources. What do you say about that? I, that's the absolute fact. Um, we've got uh, individuals who no longer have to confront their victim. Um, they can do this online, they can steal money from them, they can intimidate them, they can blackmail them. All these things are taking place and so I think the you know, current crime statistics you know, uh, really haven't caught up with accounting for that transition into the electronic world. And not only that, but they're so connected. And we've talked uh, before about how um, nation states are connected to cartels who are connected to individuals. And how do states manage to take all this information? And it seems overwhelming if you're the cop in charge of IT for a small jurisdiction and you see these little pieces. How would you recommend somebody like that putting them together? Well, you know, I think the realities are is that uh, over the past several years, our society really has um, defaulted to, you know, that's a loss. Let's just write it off to the insurance company. But the reality is that that's impacting all of us. And so um, everybody that uh, is a victim of a cyber crime 
uh, deserves to have their case investigated. And if there's any way to create a deterrence, it's only going to be between agencies uh, working together at all levels. And so I think that's where we're at today, um, as opposed to just saying, well, that's the FBI's problem. State and local agencies truly need to uh, get involved and find ways to partner to help uh, victims. And how did you do that? I mean, you have a very specific example with uh, FBI Director Comey saying that Utah is actually the model for what we should do around the country. Can you talk about how you engaged other states to help with that? Yeah, I can. We were fortunate. Um, we started out first, we were seeing exponential increases in the amount of tax against the state of Utah and its databases. And so in dealing with that, uh, we were able to bring together investigators from our State Bureau of Investigation along with uh, those folks who work in technical services and having them collaborate and share information. Uh, those that are defending and protecting the state databases were seeing a lot of criminal activity and uh, getting information that helped, uh, you know, identify suspects that the investigators could use. And so that first year, um, we learned a lot. Um, we reached out to the other state agencies throughout the country um, using the Association of State Criminal Investigative Agencies. And in that first conference call we had uh, back then, which was 2012, uh, we had about 21 states involved looking at, you know, hearing about what we were doing and uh, finding ways that we might all work together and build up our capacity and expertise. Um, after that year, I had an opportunity to uh, be at FBI headquarters and uh, representing state law enforcement agencies and uh, was asked by uh, the deputy director, you know, what is an area that the FBI could do more to work with uh, state and local agencies? And so, um, being able to share what we were doing in Utah and how these other states were starting to engage um, resonated with them and uh, they offered to do a pilot project with us which was called Operation Wellspring and uh, that's been very successful. Um, really what it involved was we were able to get our state uh, legislators to uh, provide new positions for um, three investigators and two analysts in our fusion center. Um, that we uh, put in with the FBI counterparts that were working cyber crimes investigations. And uh, the rest was uh, embedding them with them, the FBI providing training along with uh, Homeland Security Secret Service providing some training, uh, creating those relationships and partnerships that uh, allow us now to handle everything from fraud cases to denial of services to some that actually um, re rise to the level of national security. And so unlikely threads are pulled, but they're actually connected. Yes. Do you have uh, some example of how Operation Wellspring had uh, accomplished uh, maybe an investigation on that level? I, I do. Um, you know, one that comes to mind is a case where we had victims in the state of Utah that uh, were victims of fraud that was being perpetrated, a scam that uh, takes place throughout the country, and individuals are convinced to... Uh, send their um, items of value um, to a certain address within the country, but it's realistically being sent overseas. Because of jurisdictions, you know, we would never be able to work a case like that at the state level, but uh, working with the federal partners, um, once that case uh, had leads to another state and uh, to another state, and then suddenly jumped across and became international, um, working with the FBI, we were able to put uh, a connection there with the uh, police department from, um, uh, actually it was the country of Nigeria, and working with them, um, we're able to arrest individuals in their country who were actually behind this scam. But the great part about that too, and talking about partnerships, is, is that uh, a short while later, um, we had a commander over that unit, in Nigerian police, uh, show up and stay with us for two weeks and work with our unit in Utah. So uh, building up those kind of relationships, being able to share information uh, real time is huge in this. And you had mentioned about a call center that uh, law enforcement, but mostly the public, could actually call in tips that would might help with something like this. Yeah, that's the challenge because most people don't report cyber crimes that occur. And so um, the FBI operates a, a unit that's called Internet Crimes Complaint Center, or referred to as IC3, located in West Virginia. 
But uh, what we found that if a victim, no matter where they are, report to IC3, IC3 can do the analysis on that, link analysis, showing where the victims are, who the suspect is, what the relationships of this suspect with possibly with other suspects. And for an investigator, that's a great package to receive and be able to start working because you have most of that uh, overview um, right in front of you. So um, our goal is to get more victims of cyber crimes in the state of Utah to report into IC3 and work with them and also to see that happen throughout the country because we really do need a central location for analysis so that this can all be put together and become workable and uh, give us a chance to create more deterrence. And you know, I, I just think about it from the cops perspective and, and uh, smaller agencies that don't have a lot of resources. This is a tremendous way for them to participate and help uh, solve some of these crimes that may, they may think are unrelated but actually are. It really is because, um, to be honest with you, our state legislators, although they recognize all the cyber crime that hits the state, um, they're really looking out for their constituents and uh, the victims that uh, like could be people we know that our family that are being uh, taken advantage of and uh, having money stolen from them electronically and uh, being able to actually do something with that. So there's a lot of satisfaction in that for uh, law enforcement officers and uh, the analysts that work with them. You're doing a tremendous job in the state of Utah and using the taxpayers' money in such a great way that I can't think of a better example of, of collaboration with the state, local, and federal government. So thank you so much for being with us here today. Thank you, Heather. It's been very nice. I appreciate it.